Let's start. And please, everybody, take your seat. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to our side event to the UN Partnership Forum 2024. My name is Miroslav Polzer and I'm with IAI Glotscher. It's an ECOSOC accredited civil society organization. And we are here today with several partners to talk about uh, co-creating the future with new thinking, culture and digital innovation. And uh, at our side event, we will uh, talk about this time. This time, yeah, I, I'm uh, managing that. Uh, so uh, we will talk today about the role of culture, music, and digital innovation and multi-stakeholder partnerships for uh, all of society engagement in global goals implementation in the context of the preparations of the UN Summit of the Future. The key element of the side event is the presentation of the Glotscher Mighty Stakeholder Partnership for Global Challenges Action Empowerment and our initiatives uh, in the field of music and culture and entertainment for uh, youth and citizens, uh, SDGs and family action empowerment and uh, a conceptual framework, a new idea that we think could uh, really help uh, the summit of the future to be successful with it just the local facts for the future. So uh, we have now the uh, summit of the future uh, as our point of delivery where we want to contribute to and it's about a new international consensus on how to deliver a better present and safeguard the future and uh, in the description of the event on the homepage on the UN uh, homepage uh, it says it's a once in a gen in a generation opportunity to modernize uh, international cooperation, global cooperation, and uh, to find ways on how to do we cooperate better. And we believe that uh, non-state actors are a very important player. The citizens, uh, the especially young people, but also cities, uh, uh, companies, private sector, all of us need to work better together and we need their an institutional and conceptual framework and that's what we are trying to build with Glotscher. So, uh, as I said, uh, IAI, my organization, it has the name International Association for the Advancement of Innovative Approaches to Global Challenges. And here we see already that uh, the topic of the summit of the future is the same is reflected in our name, innovative approaches to global challenges. So this is now our moment to shine. We want to really bring uh, new solutions, new resources, new momentum to the UN. And we have uh, for today's event, the UN Habitat, the youth program as a partner, the Climate Chain Coalition, <coughs> it's the blockchain technology uh, network, which has been co-founded by the UN Climate Change Secretariat and there are 370 organizations that are looking how to use Web3 technologies for uh, better climate action outcomes. It's the Slovenian Ministry of the Economy, Tourism and Sport, uh, represented today by Nena. Uh, we have done a lot in the past together and uh, also have been co-organized this today. International Youth uh, Conference, uh, represented by Ali and Mustafa, uh, he is uh, uh, leading our youth programs and uh, doing great work with the UN Department for Global Communication and the NGO Committee on Sustainable Development in New York is also uh, a co-organizer of today's event. So about IAI, we are UN accredited with ECOSOC, the DGC, UNFCCC, and we are building the Global Changes Action Empowerment Ecosystem blockchain with culture, technology and organizational innovation as the main pillars. Uh, the organization is uh, registered in Austria, 
in Klagenfurt, you see it on this image, it's the center of the world. <laughs> and therefore we are also uh, delighted to have uh, our uh, uh, mission from, of Austria represented at the side event and also the mission of Slovenia because uh, in this part of Austria, in Carinthia, Poroska, Kärnten, there lives a uh, Slovene-speaking ethnic minority which I belong to and therefore we are uh, happy to build bridges between both countries and uh, bringing collaborative uh, power to the UN system. So uh, now for an inspiration and as, uh, for a start, let's uh, have a short video to align our thinking of what uh, it is that we are talking about. So let's play this video that has been uh, directed by Christina Stevens here on my side. Here we are. summit of the future, this global challenges, global family, uh, the multilateral system, looking how can we deliver better results is like building the human power. And uh, the UN system, in its logic and also the summit of the future, as we see now, is that just the top there, the national governments are somehow uh, negotiating the outcome and uh, making decisions but in order for the whole system to work and to be future-proof and to be able to deliver, we have to have a, a pact also with those who are at the bottom, who are carrying uh, all the weight. And uh, so our message here is this new thinking that uh, please create uh, more opportunities for uh, the citizens and the youth to not only uh, communicate input uh, in consultations or so, but really to bring in also action and impact that it becomes a part of a multi-stakeholder innovation system and action system. That's uh, what the world is missing and it will help the UN system a lot. And uh, Roger, our multi-stakeholder partnership, we are building the bridge. There are uh, huge potentials of uh, civil society, non-state actors, NGOs, uh, social enterprise, entrepreneurs, uh, educators, to really inspire and support uh, local SDG action and also global SDG action. We have a youth music competition. We've had a digital art for climate, uh, visual art competition. Our winners have been shown there on Shibuya uh, billboards in Japan, really with this kind of positive message and uh, culture we uh, get uh, resonance in the media world, people are taking it up, young people are happy to engage. We have uh, been able to engage uh, uh, artists in the Matare informal settlement in Kenya with our partners from UN Habitat. We have the tools and programs now in the field of uh, digital badges, crypto stamps uh, that will be used for innovative resource mobilization for youth climate action. We've had a workshop in uh, Dubai at the climate conference COP28 uh, with the UAE post authorities, with Climate Kick, uh, the knowledge and innovation community. We are uh, bringing uh, spaces, we are making these bridges to the UN system with a conference and an exhibit every year at uh, 
And this is a photo from uh, our exhibit uh, in September 2022. So uh, that's a little bit uh, what we are already delivering. And we are now creating spaces, concrete spaces, with uh, this, uh, this innovation pavilion and the presence at the UN headquarters. But now, especially this year, we are starting two new programs. One is that we will have a festival, a Glotcha co-creation festival, to bring together the creative community in the support of the UN Summit of the Future. And uh, we have a book, a youth camp uh, in uh, St. Primus and Turnersee for 120 people. And uh, we have it booked for 12 days. And we have booked also a cultural center uh, in the nearby village uh, where 250 people can sit. And uh, we will develop their programs, entertainment programs, and build the community uh, for us uh, to work better together. And a key new element is this uh, Glotcha Streaming TV, an entertainment program that we are starting now with uh, an entrepreneur from Slovenia, uh, Rapido TV, uh, Perceptions TV. And uh, this will be a super app environment where uh, content creators, grassroots content creators will be able to contribute uh, their videos, their also education, educational materials, and uh, we will have a uh, mechanism <coughs> of public voting and jury voting to identify high quality content. And then we will uh, bring this uh, to the users, the subscribers of the platform, but also have uh, the possibility to have uh, uh, content syndication so that we can offer it also to uh, uh, big telecom uh, companies and so that they in their sustainability programming will be able to use uh, content from our community and this we believe could be a mechanism a creative economy ecosystem through which uh, we will uh, create livelihoods for those who are participating and also for the networks uh, that they can sustain and we can all work together it, uh, on the platform it's also e-commerce uh, functionality so we will be able to uh, sell digital collectibles crypto stamps and uh, whatever those who have projects they will be able to uh, present projects cities will have the possibility to present in the uh, uh, cities uh, net zero cities games uh, channel and uh, things like this and here the message join us because uh, our uh, partnership is now ready to really get on the next level to onboard uh, content creator partners, sponsors, team members, interns. We have set up a survey uh, where uh, you can find more information and uh, then we will schedule calls and invite people those weekdays that will, that will be confirmed that they will join us uh, at our festival. And in September, uh, the week before the high level uh, summit and the uh, summit of the future, uh, meeting, we will go and uh, present the uh, results that we will achieve together. And uh, with this, uh, I'm delighted now to give the word to the Deputy Permanent Representative of the Austrian Mission to the UN, Stefan Bretterhofer, to, to talk a little bit about what Austria is doing for the Summit of the Future for non-state sectors <coughs> engagement and the role of culture, of course, Austria as the culture superpower. <laughs> exactly. No, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Poitzel, for outlining your impressive activities. And uh, I'd like to uh, welcome everyone here. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's a real honor and pleasure that you invited me to speak. And uh, uh, on behalf of the Permanent Mission of Austria, I'm really pleased to see all of you here and uh, that you're taking part in this uh, interesting event. Um, I would uh, also like to thank you that you decided to spend your lunch break with us, although I did not see anyone eating their lunch. But, uh, so I think it's, uh, it's time well invested, uh, and I really think, I thank uh, Georgia and the organizers and partners uh, for putting this uh, round table together. And I understand there will be quite a few speakers who will have a uh, uh, very good overview and the full picture of, uh, of, this, uh, of, the, of the topic of today. 
I'm of course also very grateful uh, to be here with my dear colleague Sasha, the Deputy Permanent Representative uh, of the Slovenia Mission, uh, uh, which also supports this, uh, this event today. Um, as I enjoy listening more than speaking, especially when we have a lot of very interesting panelists, uh, stakeholders, uh, young people, representatives of the civil society here, uh, I just would like to speak very briefly and uh, limit myself uh, to three observations and, and situations uh, I would like to make in connection with, uh, with the topic of today. First of all, and uh, as I have mentioned it already a couple of times, uh, the summit of the future is certainly uh, the kind of the central event uh, of the UN uh, this year. I think there will be, there's lots of uh, uh, events that will be organized uh, in, uh, in preparing this event. Actually, there were already some preparatory events last year during Highland Week. There was a ministerial preparatory event of this uh, important summit, and uh, I think it's it's a very ambitious project, a real legacy project of, of the Secretary General. And uh, as, you, as you as you might know, yesterday the co-facilitators uh, Germany and Namibia they they presented the, the zero draft uh, of the of the outcome document uh, of the summit uh, or of the pact uh, for the future. Uh, and uh, I really think that this uh, shall open a new chapter in the way the international community works and interacts and, and delivers. Um, if I look at, at your agenda and, and the concept note of today, uh, and you were mentioning it as well, this idea of local pacts for the future is, of course, a, a very important tool for uh, translating international commitments into grassroots level actions. And you mentioned the participation of civil society. You mentioned also the participation of youth, future generations of children. Uh, I mean, there's one uh, chapter really dedicated to youth-related uh, 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 topics. But in general, I think those are also topics which horizontally are in, in extremely important to, to be reflected and also in the, uh, in this uh, document that we will hopefully, the heads of state and government will uh, adopt in September. But of course, it shouldn't be a, a document uh, discussed between politicians and diplomats, but it should be actually something which has an added value for, for, for all the citizens. Second point I wanted to make is uh, the role of culture and art, and I agree with you. Music is very important, uh, also in international uh, relations and in human to human relations, and uh, it's all cannot and must not be underestimated. We, uh, me as an Austrian diplomat, we really see culture as a soft policy tool, uh, especially being Austrian, coming from a small European country with 8 million people. We proudly refer to our rich cultural history and like to consider ourselves really as a cultural superpower. We have also a, a big uh, network of cultural forums, which are um, the directors normally are uh, also diplomats from the foreign ministry. So we really try to promote our, our culture, not only the well-known one, but also the, the present and the contemporary culture uh, in the world. Uh, in fact, uh, creativity, talent, and creative expression are wonderful human characteristics. So I'm really also eager to, to hear more and to learn uh, what your plans and projects are in, in this regard. And third, uh, and I think that's also a very important uh, topic, uh, is the digital age we are in now at the moment, and it's really uh, a revolution, right? Uh, so I'm still from a generation where I, I still remember a world without cell phones, but there's uh, <laughs> people that are uh, many years younger than I am, and so the rapid technological development uh, it's, has, it's really a, it's advancing at a, at a very high speed and uh, it's both a, a big uh, opportunity and chance but also a big challenge and this is also uh, a topic which is which will be uh, also in the focus of our discussions in the fact of the future but also in this global digital compact which is also uh, negotiated in the next couple of months here at the UN because there's really also the question how can you regulate uh, uh, developments that are still very new and ongoing. Um, so I think there, there's a lot to look into. Um, and I think the more we get a grasp on those new technologies and new developments, the more, and the more we learn about it, the better. And so I really also look forward to hearing your thoughts uh, on this aspect and uh, having an interesting exchange on that. Uh, I leave it at that. Uh, thank you once again for inviting me. And, uh, 
um, <coughs> wish uh, ourselves uh, one and a half interesting hours of, of conversation and uh, interaction. Well, well, thank you very much. <laughs> and now, equally honored uh, to have uh, Sasha Jurecko, Deputy Permanent Representative of the Republic of Slovenia to the UN in New York. Uh, please, your perspectives on the topic. Yeah. Thank you, Miroslav. Um, dear participants and colleagues, uh, I want to also warmly welcome you all to this event on behalf of the Burmish Commission of Slovenia. We are very happy to work with our neighbor Austria uh, on this event. We are always happy to work with you. Uh, and thank you, Miroslav, for being, bringing us together. Um, I would have, uh, actually, I think uh, Stefan already kind of covered the Summit of the Future, digital contact and all of that. So I would think just maybe say a couple of words uh, about what Slovenia is doing in the area of uh, digital and innovative approaches. Uh, and something I want to point out, you already mentioned the importance of partnerships. And all I can say is really that I strongly agree with, with that. Uh, partnerships are key to the implementation of the SDGs. Uh, and we look for, I, I personally look forward to care about new innovative approaches at this event, and some of which you already presented. Uh, so Slovenia as a country is making great efforts to stay at the front of the digital and technological revol revolution. And we are very interested in the use of digital technology to advance the implementation of the sustainable development goals of the Agenda 23. Um, for example, <coughs> Slovenia is home to a UNESCO International Research Center for, uh, for Artificial Intelligence, which is based at the Josef Stefan Institute in Ljubljana. Uh, this institution works on mobilizing current AI uh, technologies to assist in the implementation of the, of the SDGs. Um, for example, our efforts can be also further illustrated by a concrete project which was developed by the Slovenian Center of Excellence for Space Sciences and Technology and the Yomo Kenyatta University of Nairobi. Um, the aim of the project is to optimize ecosystem management and strengthen climate resilience. And it does so by using um, microsatellite satellite imagery to prepare digital twin models that will enable analysis of interactions between water, soil, vegetation, and human infrastructure in terrestrial, river, and maritime ecosystems. Um, another point that I wanted to mention is that uh, since the beginning of this year, Slovenia is a member of the UN Security Council, <coughs> and one of uh, the priorities that we set out during, during our membership is uh, to pursue conflict <coughs> prevention. And as part of our activities, we will also explore the use of <coughs> intelligence in conflict prevention, including in the fight against uh, disinformation. Um, to conclude, I just want to point out that the link between conflict and development is very clear to all of us. I think uh, there can be no sustainable development without peace, and there can be no peace without sustainable development. And we all know that digital technologies can, can have a really crucial role to play in both sides of this equation. Um, I will stop here and wish you a productive discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Slovenia really, despite its uh, only 2 million inhabitants, is really a superpower in areas like uh, digital innovation and also now with the seat at the uh, Security Council, you can play a very positive role, there's no doubt. And now, as we were talking about the culture, creativity, uh, I would like to give the floor to Christina, uh, uh, Christina Stevens, uh, who is our uh, uh, delegate, our representative at the <coughs> in New York in the context of our accreditation to the Department for Global Communication, the award-making filmmaker and uh, media expert, and many more things. Uh, so you have listened uh, to the uh, uh, presentation of the draft uh, summit, yes, uh, summit yes, declaration. Yes, I have. So what are your thoughts? And, and you know, the film that you that we tried to see earlier. Let me explain a little bit of it to you because yesterday, uh, in the room, I think it was Cameroon and I think also Morocco, uh, both said uh, it's all very good to have a plan. Uh, you know, and we do have. We've got a plan. We've got the SDGs. Um, but what's going to happen? I mean, you can have a plan to plant a tree, but you've actually got to plant the tree. You've got to do some action. And this is where 
we feel we come in because we're here. We're like that foundation at the bottom of the pyramid. And we are here to support, to bring in civil society and everyone because unless we all get involved, we will never achieve, I mean, we have single digits now to, to achieve the SDGs. And it won't happen unless we all pull together because we're all in this together. So we are here to support our leaders in the promises and the commitments they've made. And we now, now that we have this digital intelligence that can allow us to kind of just reach tall buildings with a single bound, now we, we, now we can actually see this happen. So this is, we are uh, actually calling out to member nations to say, use us because we're, we're a community of NGOs, organizations, groups, individuals who are, I mean, there's brilliance in this room. I know it because I know many of you. So, uh, and we are here to help <coughs> make the promises come true. And how do we do it? Well, because we're talking about, we're reaching into the soul. We're dealing with music. We're dealing with culture that goes deep. And this is where true transformation happens. It doesn't really happen in the mind. The mind does the thinking, but then we have to move to the heart and the heart moves forward and then there becomes action because the action comes from the heart, not really from the head. The head kind of thinks about it, oh yeah, yeah, it's very good. But the head also goes against things. So really we need to move from the heart and that's what we're all here to do. Um, uh, as you saw, I had a, 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 I have an organization called Revolution Love, and we're a hub, we're an action hub for civil society. We work with children and we work with older people. So we start, and we're across the SDG, so we start with poverty. I mean, we're there on the grounds with poverty, giving you information, educating you, inspiring you, and then guiding you into how to take action because everyone wants to take action from the little people to the older people. Everyone, we all know we're in, we're in this together. So everyone wants to take action, but it's a little, it's a little numbing. It's overwhelming. Uh, and so we're here also to bring that information to you, to download the easy stuff, find your passion and turn it into action. Um, you know, uh, and I want to say one last thing, because we are, we've been doing this for what, 15 years. We've been out there with music and we've been out, but we did not have the digital intelligence and, we, and Miro had not at that point made the connections with all of these organizations. And I think we touch pretty much every continent. Yes. We, are, we, are, we are actually in every continent and we're putting out a call, come join us and help let us help our leaders to achieve to achieve the promises and the commitment that they've made because they won't do it without us. Uh, however, and we are we are now a generation. We are in this room and we are now, we're the same generation now. We're no longer XYZ and baby boomers and all of that. We are the generation of change makers because we're the generation our future generations are waiting for. So I turn this on to, I pass this on to whomever next to uh, show your brilliance. Uh, we have it. We have it. <laughs> Christina, uh, we have on our agenda uh, Ethan Green from here for Earth, uh, Los Angeles, uh, uh, Gen Z. He uh, today in the morning confirmed that he will be here. He's preparing a festival in Brooklyn. I don't know, perhaps he's at the bus office. Yesterday, it took uh, some of our members two, uh, two hours to get uh, through. But uh, uh, Ali, would you like to say something on behalf of youth? Or uh, Rory, would you like to say a few words on behalf of youth? No. <laughs> <laughs> we had it uh, planned, but uh, it's now a little bit disappointing that we don't have a youth voice. But you, you can always say something. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ad hoc. Uh, you will speak Ad later hoc. as well, but uh, now a little bit youth and uh, some bit of the future and the point of creativity and uh, culture and youth power. Uh, thank you, thank you, Miro, first of all, for organizing this uh, side event, and uh, thank you for the, the permanent missions to support this uh, event. I'm directly going to jump on to the, the summit of the future and especially on the back of the future, especially regarding to the youth uh, and how we are mobilizing young people. 
uh, all across the globe, especially trying to have uh, the voices from the global south included into the back of the future. Uh, the younger generation who are below 34 years of age and uh, to, sub to, to do that uh, we have created a consultation process initially we were able to reach out almost a uh, little less than 500,000 young people before 31st December of last year and have their input in forms of consultation by online consultations and person consultations in different universities, school, colleges, community organizations, youth organizations, mobilizing, or I would rather say mass mobilization, especially in Global South when we speak of uh, Africa, South Asia, Far East, <coughs> um, reaching out young people as far as we can, even to the places where they don't know what the UN is, what the UN Sustainable Development Goals were. And we were able to have conversations with them and explain them the UN Sustainable Development Goals and what UN does and how their input is uh, essential to for the back of the future, not just back of the future, but also for the sustainable sustainability and political uh, stability and economic stability in their region, in their countries, in their uh, communities to uh, so. We interacted with them uh, in their local languages, uh, respecting their local culture and uh, uh, explain what we are doing in their local sense, rather than asking them to come to the UN and trying to explain them in the language and the culture we, uh, we interact in. So this was a, a very successful experiment and uh, we're going to continue doing uh, such interactions with young people not just in global south but also across the globe as uh, we will near the summit of the future and uh, it is all happening with the with the help of digital innovation and technology and new tools uh, we are having to interact with the, the people and include their voices having their input in it and i'm going to speak more later uh, in the, on, on the program in detail about this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ali. Uh, thanks for jumping in and for the great work that you're doing with uh, the International Youth Conference, really reaching young people through the use of uh, these new technologies and uh, people who would otherwise not have the connection, the bridge to the UN system, and that's uh, what we are aiming for. And now we have Mac of Kubo. Uh, you can come here uh, and uh, present music for SDGs. So this is uh, for us also very important that... That's very good uh, to have an example how through digital innovation and with culture we are creating a community also with uh, artists in Japan and uh, you have very inclusive programs. So I will... Uh, uh, share the slides for you. You will just say uh, next and uh, uh, just a second. Here we are. Okay, thank you, Ben. I'm very, very honored to be here uh, together with the Brochure and I would like to promote the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals through music and also entertainment. So I'm an executive director for the project, but also I have a different hat. I'm a government relations international firms for Nippon Life Insurance Company, the largest insurance company in the world's largest asset owner of Japan. So, yeah. Thanks, Thanks for okay. Yes. So I'd like to share some of the uh, project uh, past. So we actually in 2018 we started a very small uh, music group and we did a jazz anime concert in Broadway. Uh, but after the pandemic, it became a more global reach. And then, for example, I joined the Digital uh, Art for Climate Institute during the Dubai uh, Expo. And also, we did a reception for OECD in Paris. And we joined the uh, UNEP, the 50th year anniversary in Stockholm. And also, we sent the uh, blind singer to the uh, opening ceremony of the Tokyo Paralympic. And also, we are engaged in a sustainable fashion show in Hokkaido. And uh, last year, our scope was expanded to the movie industry by participating Come from festival. And thanks to the Samina Mugal, the designer, I'm get on stage uh, regularly on the full major fashion week. And they're starting from London Fashion Week, Milan Fashion Week, Paris Fashion Week, talking about sustainable fashion, introducing the magicians. 
also we are preparing for Expo in Osaka 2025 and inviting the, uh, like the, the local singers and also the kid dancers who can do Michael Jackson. And this is something that we prepare for the Expo 2025. And some people talk about the entertainment. Uh, I'm known as a regular lecturer in the university in Japan talking about SDGs. But what is unique is that I bring singer, pianist, violinist, and then I transform my university lecture as an entertainment, musical entertainment. I did this also for insurance industry in Vienna and Bali. So I we uh, educate industry people also through uh, that space. And then the uh to the one page. Okay, so the uh we are the uh, we, we are part, uh, sitting in a boat at the UN PLI. So we invite us uh, investors from around the world. And we discuss how investment can be directed to environment and social. And we organize a reception at Tokyo Tower, inviting the singers and fashion models and also some performers. And we entertain themselves and we talk about SDGs there. Next page. And also, the Nippon Life supported the Humming for Peace event in Hiroshima, the single city of peace. And they are, we connected the people uh, from the South East, three countries. <coughs> Good thing is about humming is that you don't have to speak any languages. So you can just sing together. And then uh, at the same time, this is what uh, we are trying to do also this year. We would like at least have 50 countries at this point. And then we are part of the World Singing Day in Japan. And then we just uh, have the uh, project of singing the same song all over the world together on the same day. You see a little girl in front. Actually, she's my daughter. So this was, uh, she, it was my first time for my daughter was involved in the music for SDGs project. She loves SDGs. Only problem is that she thinks that SDGs is an entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, talking about digital art for climate, actually uh, we are part of the digital art for climate initiative through the our uh, leader uh, Mari uh, Asada, who is, a, uh, who is actually uh, created uh, uh, this uh, art for climate Japan. And we are having the uh, open call and we do the Japanese specific award. I'm very looking forward to teaming up with the Roger for more global sense. Next page. And also, uh, he uh, kindly invited me to speak and share the activity of M uh, Music by SDGs in July 28. And also, I myself uh, kind of uh, debuted as a painter. So, actually, the digital artist created a draw, uh, digital art based on my drawing at the age of six years old. When I was a six-year-old, I already took in about the air pollution issue, uh, water pollution issue, a uh, world peace. So I do the same thing after five, fifty years. And then, and also the Heiwa Matsuri is a kind of a group which are connecting the people <coughs> with the world, and uh, they are having the worldwide uh, event on 21st of September, Peace Day. The thanks for the, uh, like the time of difference Probably we can coordinate with the Georgia event. <coughs> this is a music for SDGs, our Day music festival we are planning for the 20th of April, and we got already 41 artists who are motivated to be part of it. And then the one, the, uh, the second one to the last, and the, uh, actually the Megan Pitcher, <coughs> a very renowned Broadway star, who was starring the Christine Dye of the Phantom of the Opera here in Broadway, is very motivated to work with us. And because she co-founded the International Music uh, a Musical Theatre Academy, and she's actually bringing the musical actors and directors around the world and bringing education to entertainment. I think massive, massive synergy is uh, this project. So we are very looking forward to that. The last page. So the, uh, actually, the, this uh, finally come to my last page. So uh, actually, uh, we are now supporting the Ishikawa Prefecture. You may heard that there's a big earthquake on the 1st of January, yes. and there's a very big uh, business disruption for the area. So we are trying to support that region through the fashion show, and we are just bringing the business. I'm, I'm sure that the donation will help, but what we are trying to do is uh, bringing the business back from the boat to this, uh, this region so that they can have more sustainable uh, support for the region in difficulties. Okay, sorry. And the last three, the uh, Down syndrome uh, supermodel we invited to the high special event, and we are trying to uh, enhance the uh, awareness on the power of disability in the area of the Paris Paris Baby event. That's it.
Thank you very much. So this is thank you very much. Uh, it's really amazing what you are doing, and it, it's also an example how our cooperation regarding the streaming TV platform, the entertainment space, will help us to bring these stories, this footage, these beautiful images from Japan to a global audience. We, can, we will use also AI supported uh, translations, and really uh, we will build uh, bridges and help also localize these global topics uh, in Japan as a pilot, but then uh, bringing the same uh, concept also to other countries. And now I'm delighted to uh, welcome Ethan, <laughs> our Gen Z uh, <laughs> representative. Please join us. You should uh, sit here at the head of the table. Christina, uh, if you could give the name tag, right? Okay. So tell us a little bit your uh, story, but you have only three minutes. Okay. Just I, know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I sincerely apologize. That line was quite the ordeal. I was oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so my name is Ethan. Uh, I'm the founder of Here For and the Here Foundation. And uh, the foundation was started around the question, what are you here for? As in what cause, crisis, idea, solution? that you care about, and how can we create uh, different ways to engage people in taking action around the causes that they are here for. Um, and so essentially our nonprofit works with other nonprofits to create experiential events, whether it be a music concert or some sort of <coughs> virtual reality game or immersive experience. And we also create uh, software and different solutions to help connect people based on the causes that they're um, on i'm actually from los angeles i'm currently here in new york because we have our second festival happening uh, we have something called the here fest which is a global concert series dedicated to creating hyper local change in various cities so it works as here for los angeles or here for new york here for lisbon here for tokyo and we want to be able to take that traveling concert series to various different cities to engage uh, various city sectors, to engage local nonprofits, local individuals, and local residences. Um, so the first one we did was in Los Angeles, and that worked with three nonprofits um, where we did a workshop and then the festival. We had 22 acts, 1,500 attendees. It was a really good, interesting experience. And then uh, this one, uh, happening on February 10th at a place called the Knockdown Center in Brooklyn. Uh, we're looking at about 3,000 people, um, and 100% of the proceeds are going to be donated to Urban Justice Center and the Big Reuse, which are two nonprofits that are working in New York City around um, social justice and uh, essentially human rights. Um, and then Big Reuse focuses on climate. Uh, justice and sustainability um, and that's pretty much what we're doing right now we have two mini events one of them is on the first at the big reuse center and then another is a uh, fundraiser art gallery that we're doing on the fifth with urban justice center uh, and then on the 10th we'll have the actual festival so aside from that we also work with um, creating different software and platforms our ticketing platform that we're using we figured you know, a, a long-standing problem with some of these um, gatherings is that you get a bunch of people in a room together to experience music or to take part in a cause. And then what happens after the fact? Everyone disperses. So our ticketing platform that we're working on right now is uh, a mobile ticket that sits in your mobile wallet. And we basically have allowed for people to connect uh, at the actual festival through the ticket and then post-festival be able to connect with each other around. Here. So, well, that's bravo. Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> really a, a young person leading in the local community with a global view, and that's what is needed. And I'm really very much looking forward to have content from your network on our uh, entertainment space that uh, other people will get inspiration, they will get ideas and what they can do so that they don't feel so anxious because eco anxiety and the uh, feeling of being powerless uh, is so strong. But with stories like yours, we are uplifted and we believe 
as a community, local community, nourished by the global community, we can uh, co-create our future, what's it, in the, the sense of uh, our title of our side event. And another co-creator of the future, Gail Davis, uh, please, if you could uh, share also your story, your uh, programs, and you have also three minutes. Uh, I, I, you have a... I have your slide. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, but, um, uh, Ouch. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, to Miroslav, thank you. And to Bosha, to the NGO committee, to Her Excellency from, from all the uh, missions. Today is a very important day in talking about what Glosha is bringing together. What Glosha is trying to bring together is no longer just hitting the mind and the heart, but it's the mind, the body, the heart, and the soul. And that is what music and art bring to the world. It hits the mind, the body, the soul. When you go home at night and you want to be uplifted, you're either dancing to music or you're either looking at a movie that you love that makes you feel good about something, okay? We look at the summit of the future. The summit of the future does not include artists and creative professionals. And that is a missing. Because it is through artists and professionals, which is what Bloch is doing here, that have to be paid, okay? We have to include them because they're human beings, just like we are, to be paid just like anyone would be. So it's great to have them included, not just in the document, but as a part of the entire document and include them in everything that we do, okay? Whether it's the politics, whether it's education, whatever it is, art makes the biggest difference for us. It makes us think in a different way. It makes us think creatively. So it's important that we do that. My background is that I've worked in the music industry for over 30 years, started here at the UN with Quincy Jones and Ned Aid and UNDP and in a multi-stakeholder situation as a volunteer, which was a dream of mine since six years old. And then another dream was um, with Miroslav Holzer here. So what I want to go into, if we can just go straight into the other ones, my background, I'll bet doesn't matter. Um, so right here. Um, if you wouldn't mind just hitting that button for a second. Thank you, Mira. No, no, going back to the other one, the video. I saw the video, okay. Yeah, um, and just hit a little bit of it. I'm not sure whether the audio will share. <laughs> well, the music is quite normal. But anyway, can you go to the middle of it? Now, this is... Not playing. You can go right there. You can stop it right there where that gentleman is sitting. He's not playing. Okay. Like no. Sorry. Okay. It's not. Uh, okay. We can go to the next slide then. Yeah. Okay. So what? It, the next slide after that one. Still want to? Still hear that? Uh huh. Okay. Right there. So this is what I want to talk about. So the music you just saw was a video that was comprised of all of our travels from around the world seeking solutions to the sustainable development goals, okay? And we brought artists from around the world together who were comprised of that video you just missed and we played it at the water conference here with you and DGC, where we talked about building back better through music and the arts, okay? This you see here is from the Ishmael Bain Taylor Kamara uh, Foundation, and they're based in Sierra Leone. This is the importance of storytelling together with an NGO. Here, this NGO is bringing together, if you can go to the next slide, Miro, please, if you wouldn't mind. They're bringing together two groups, two different things. What you just saw before was a, a truck that they helped another young lady who's well educated. They helped a young lady come together and do a food truck in Sierra Leone, where she can help the people there um, have, an, you know, have their own business. And she did that by illustrating that as educated as she was she would have her own food truck there as well, which they could do the same. And this is another area where they're helping a student to go to school and provide her with the books and a mentor to make sure she has that, okay? So why am I sharing this? When you bring music and storytelling together with an NGO or any, or private sector, private sector provides the funding. When you bring these types of stakeholders together, what you're doing is telling the story you get a, a bird's eye view into a country that you can't visit. 
and you learn more about what that NGO is doing. So this is one way of doing it. But in order for that artist or creative professional to generate an income, which is where I'm going to finish here, you have to bring that person to the table with that NGO, and they have to generate an income as well as the NGO does. And then you tie that to the mission of the NGO. So they're gaining money and also the artists is too. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the great work that you are doing, um, bridging uh, creative community and United Nations <coughs> and uh, for the fight or the arguments that you bring uh, that uh, artists should be rewarded. That's really, it's such an important role that artists are playing, creating visions of uh, better worlds, alternative futures, and uh, usually they are not rewarded, but now with the digital tools and now also with the and platform, with your platform that you're that's a good, good yes. building. And if I could just say one thing on that, Nero, with the platform you're building, this will allow artists to have an opportunity to not only, it's not just about watching them on TV, you're also giving them an opportunity to also receive monetary yes. or however that is, whether it's an NFT or whether it's monetary disbursement over to them, which is another way of them receiving money. Yeah. If you want to know more about what the Creators 2030 does, please visit the creators2030.org or the creators2030 at uh, LinkedIn. But please visit and go to IAAI Glosha and choose them as a partner. There's a lot of people doing the same thing, but what Miro is building here is a consortium. Mm -hmm. And that's different than something where it's just partner to partner, but it's a consortium of bringing everyone together. So please work with IAAI Glosha, and Miro, uh, Miro can tell you where to find that. Okay? Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you very much. Yeah, and now, uh, Ali, could you uh, turn the camera to Fernando Garibay and Oscar Bedell to, uh, that they will present uh, their initiative in the field of culture and music, supporting uh, the summit of the future and uh, global oneness. Perfect. So, Fernando, you. I'm Oscar Wendell, co producer and executive creative partner of the Interplanetary Anthem, conceived by the Yarabe Institute as a salute to and celebration of all life. This project, first announced at COP28 in Dubai, invites nations to tell their story and be part of building an ecosystem of music, musical anthems to inspire collaboration between people and cultures. We will continuously showcase the evolution of our efforts at major global events throughout the year. The first occasion will be a special surprise that will take you with love to the moon on February the 13th and the 14th at the Kennedy Space Center in Orlando. Fernando Garibay, founder of the Garibay Institute and super producer of Grammy award-winning albums. He has worked with artists including Lady Gaga, U2, Whitney Houston, and Britney Spears. Fernando is the executive producer of the Interplanetary Anthem and will now share more details on our project's rollout, aim, and mission. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Miro. Music is innate to our core essence. It is the connective tissue connecting all of humanity. It is our oldest language, more importantly, one that we all have in common. Music transcends yet touches all things. It has the power to forge deep connections to the heart, the mind, and to each other. Therefore, music is our instrument of choice for soft power and connection. With the Interplanetary Anthem Project, we are in a position to lead and grasp an opportunity for positive change by uniting the members of the United Nations with the global music community. We invite countries to represent their people and culture by engaging youth to contribute in building a global musical mosaic that distinctly reflects each country's, country's unique fingerprint and identity while achieving an expression of global oneness. With diplomatic partnerships from around the world, we will collaborate with each country's national music treasures. I will work with local production and creative talent as a collaborator, and more importantly, a mentor 
to write, produce, record, and distribute impactful anthems that weave a tapestry of international awareness, cultural growth, as well as to inspire sustainable economic development. The outcome will be unforgettable music that attracts national attention for cultures, countries, and people with a hopeful, positive message to serve as a beacon for hope and unity. This year, we will also collaborate with LEAP 2024 in Riyadh, following by the Paris Blockchain Week Summit at the Louvre and the Future Blockchain Summit in Dubai. Additionally, we plan to produce performances at the United Nations General Assembly during this during the Summit of the Future in September, followed by COP29 in Kazakhstan. I hope you will join us and be part of our worldwide musical exploration in a quest for peace, prosperity, and unity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fernando Garibay and Oscar Wendell. Wishing you uh, much success with this initiative and uh, also great that you with your celebrities engagement power will also join forces with the UN but also with Lodja and also for our streaming TV platform that we will really inspire the masses and win the hearts over for uh, of people for local and global efforts uh, for the common good. Thank you, Mir. Thank you. You're very welcome. And uh, now uh, we have the next part in our agenda. It's about uh, our them No, we have had this cultural component now, and our second uh, thematic uh, uh, module of this event is local pacts for the future. Because uh, people might be uh, inspired and everything, but there is no formal link uh, to the UN system. And this we are trying to fill with uh, the a concept of local pacts for the future and uh, the idea is uh, at the summit of the future the main planned outcome is a global pact for the future which is an intergovernmentally negotiated outcome document signed by heads of states but this is more or less irrelevant for the people on the street uh, if you will ask them are you happy about this outcome they will probably not be so emotional about it but with our local pacts for the future and the information system that we, that we are developing, and individuals, SDGs and climate action app and uh, challenges mapping tool where people go in their neighborhood and specify what they care about, what is a challenge that they would like to see solved. An example, for instance, that uh, people go out and say, okay, in our school, in our local community, we have uh, a heating system based on oil. And we want to uh, change this. We want to have renewable energy. And so that they provide this uh, information, localization of uh, objects, stakeholders, potential action, potential impact in our information system. And then other people can join and say, uh, yes, uh, we, we can also contribute to solving this challenge. And so those who are then involved, they, they form a pact and web three technologies makes it possible that people specify what they are contributing, what they are uh, expecting in return. So this will be a totally new next generation of uh, pacts, uh, multi-stakeholder partnerships. So the topic of today's uh, conference is about multi-stakeholder partnership and with our local pacts for the future, which uh, we would love it could, if it could be mentioned in this outcome document of the summit of the future. We will develop the tools for people to really uh, come with their challenges, with their needs, and connect it with SDGs and uh, global goals implementation mechanisms. And uh, in this context, uh, now I'm delighted to welcome Doug Ray. Uh, our our uh, is, uh, is um, our our the leader of the youth program and and Great, thank you so much. Uh, you're you're muted, you're you're muted, 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 mu
Yeah, no, it's coming from, from that one. Coming from that one. The HDMI is connected. Yeah, the sound is on. Now we're seeing now we're seeing the sound sound <laughs> sound of the bike or that bike that you know you can have a you can have a picture that could sound could sound someone in the cage it's connected it's connected to the uh this is uh this is the Okay okay we have a problem we have a problem okay I guess, 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 I Can you hear me? Can I'm not online now. You can hear me, I can't hear you. Hello? Nation from Switzerland, from Switzerland, from Switzerland, from Switzerland, from Switzerland, from there is, uh, there is uh, uh, here, so there are here, there are players, many players, players and needs, and needs, and needs, and needs, and needs, and and needs, 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 and the ecosystem or the shared report in standard and interim and impact also also the shared impact information so that the data and then the social the social the market places and so this kind of as I said, uh, uh, said uh, all the digital are from China, from China, communities, 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 they are not uh, working with, I've been excited, I've been excited, I've been positive, positive, we can express themselves, we are strong, strong, communicating throughout, throughout, and that we can be there, then we can be some kind of strength from digital level, the level, now it's now it's our our I've been here for for the but the the our 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 our
you can also sit here if you want. Yeah, yeah. And then, 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 So you said, so you said, the statement, the statement. Yes, so earlier, 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 earlier uh, I spoke about the outreach that I have spoke about the outreach that we have done for the value of the people in the house meeting just a little before 31st of the December in a, in a little bit amount of time uh, to get their input into the fact of the future and submit it for the zero graph, which was a successful experiment, which we did with the help uh, of the use of uh, digital technology. We use apps, we use social media like Instagram and Facebook, X platform for previously Twitter to reach all those young people out. Interestingly, when we were reaching those young people out, 70% uh, of those young people didn't know about the UN Sustainable Development Goals or they don't know about exactly what UN does. So uh, it was an eye opener for all of us, which we have been uh, speaking and talking about from at least five years now, that we need to include young people right from the grassroots, right from the grassroots into the system of the UN where we can have their input into the decision-making processes and side events like that. And uh, you have been really helpful in doing so because uh, uh, we are doing these experiments and outreach uh, of reaching young people since at least 2019, since the end of the civil society conference <clears> in uh, 2019, when we invented this mechanism uh, to, you know, do the outreach, reach out young people, and um, take the UN system to them rather than ask them to come attend the conference in New York or Nairobi or Geneva, uh, because they they come there like. Uh, limitations of visa and financial issues. If they were, or wanna come to New York uh, to attend a conference, then there is a big cost to that. If the person is, for example, coming from Taiwan or coming from some far reach ticket accommodation and everything. So I think with the help of digital innovation and uh, technology, we were able to do the successful experiment of reaching out young people, including that into the system. And we would love to see how moving forward with the placement of new assistant secretary general for the youth affairs, how these things move forward and how we are able to meaningfully engage those actual grassroots young people into the UN decision making system. Thank you. Thank you very much. We were we were there with you um, right right after the UNGA. Uh, and made a presentation there, and I was so impressed because you had a lot of youth from from um, all over Africa, and afterwards they came up to us and they were saying, "How can we help our leaders? How can we hold their feet to the fire when we? How do we know what promises they've made for us? You know, so they were they really wanted to be engaged, and it was very it was very inspiring. It was I took documents back to my friends in California, saying, "You have to get involved with." Because there are a lot of young people there that could say, what can we do? How do we get involved? How do we participate? Exactly. They are hungry for information and for participation. So uh, there, there is a, just, just to add, there is a thing that uh, they think that uh, uh, UN needs them. Uh, uh, or they need the UN. I think their perception is wrong. Exactly. If the UN needs them, that's the other way yes. around. Yes. Because if you want to make a meaningful change and say that UN talks and work for the people, then we have to walk the talk and engage those young people into the conversations like these and many others coming into the future, especially in fact of the future, because you and need those voices. Yes, well, that's why we're here. We're a bridge, we're pathways. Yeah. We're building pathways and all of the, all the community that we're bridging, building of NGOs who have, you know, a toolbox, an arsenal of apps and websites yes. and you know, I mean, so we're we're helping them, but we all but we that connection that you've built can come into us because we're like wide open and welcoming them in. Yes. Uh, absolutely, we're reaching out as far as uh, we can in our limited uh, available resources. Uh, thanks to partner like Nomiro that uh, provides a lot of technological resources 
uh, without all these partner resources, I don't think so. We were able to do such experiments and outreach uh, that we are doing right now. Mm, together, yes. Robert. That, and uh, regarding the tools, as I said, the, the toolbox that we are developing, also for the pack, uh, local parks for the future, just to make it a little bit clearer, is uh, we need um, in, uh, digital identities of uh, these different stakeholders, citizens, youth, that they can identify them in the digital space with self-sovereign identities. Then we need a global challenges action registry where there is a mechanism that people can document what they are doing for the SDGs and that this gets uh, recognized, verified uh, and certified so that we have then also the incentive mechanisms. And uh, we are working, uh, Hossein Hassan is leading this with the IASA, it's the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis. We are working now on a uh, research, uh, applied research project uh, in the Austrian Climate Research Program. It's called Pact Action, about uh, doing the basic research and uh, action research on how these local pacts for the future could uh, work and also how it can be useful for the EU climate pact. Uh, it's also a program. So now to Nena on the agenda. It's you are a very uh, valuable and dear partner of ours. So please tell uh, what your ministry is doing in the field of digital innovation that could help uh, the summit of the future and empowering citizens and youth. All of you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just move over? No, I'm comfortable here. She she doesn't want to move. I can tell. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. what happened? This. Okay. Stand by. Did I just did I touch yes. the wrong yes, thing? Yes, I go on the, on the right side. It's fine. It's fine. It's here. Uh oh. 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 Yes, we are. It's fine. Am I yeah. doing right? Okay. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, actually, I will start from um, around um, the way, but uh, I, I wanted to mention we are talking about partnerships today, and uh, it's uh, very important also for the technology and for um, take a part in the development of the technology to take uh, um, an importance or to have uh, the important partners together. So. I would first uh, maybe touch that the partnership that we are building together with Glocha, with the uh, previous uh, Oscars institution, World Trade Center, with um, uh, some uh, institutions and companies here um, which are joining in the last mile, so that we can see on one hand how digital transformation and digital innovation is important for uh, the economy and uh, the society and uh, on the other hand how we can add it with the partners and to the partnership build really uh, the work or the concept that can address different types and we saw today that we have digital art for them. we have youth uh, uh, issues we have music, uh, for example, that can be recorded, uh, verified, uh, somehow valued uh, and uh, transferred from one to another, so it can be valued uh, like a, an ownership asset for um, certain groups of, of, uh, of people. But here I would like to um, emphasize the, the role of um, digital innovation in that social changing world that we are addressing also through uh, the actions that was um, addressed in the first part. Because I think that the, those uh, issues are, are very connected together. Uh, as we saw, I was um, uh, explaining how uh, digital tools was helping the youth uh, to contribute and to participate. Not only the youth, okay? We have on the local level different uh, stakeholders that can be visible and that can uh, have a participatory approach to address the problems on the local level through uh, also the partnership approach. Um, we are talking about geo-information. This is not only the collecting the information about the, um, the climate uh, uh, issues on the local level, but also how the people are behaving, how they are um, accepting or uh, feeling the 
the, their activation and the participation on the local level, how they can collaborate through the technological um, tools on the local level to be visible on the global level. We were talking yesterday about that um, importance of ESG, but the importance of S within ESG. Uh, we are developing technologies to support um, uh, ESG monitoring, verification, and um, and evidence. But here, uh, we can put a lot of effort to bring uh, all the efforts together to make technology as a strong supporter and to make the community uh, very well empowered to use the technology uh, to be visible and to be heard. Uh, and uh, maybe it's um, very important, uh, today was mentioned also in the plenary session, uh, and um, uh, it was mentioned earlier uh, in the speeches of uh, the permanent representative offices. It's very important to collaborate also in the development of the technologies. We um, in Europe uh, for the last five years are strongly developing a European blockchain services infrastructure. Um, apart from AI that we are strong in and we are developing that um, digital twins uh, for the cities and uh, also it will draw a local partnerships and local contribution. We need to identify the technologies that are complementary, and the blockchain technology is definitely complementary to, to that AI and can um, very much contribute to the visibility, uh, the recognition, to transparency, to accountability, uh, and to um, engagement of certain communities to um, act as um, on actors or uh, stakeholders of um, users of the technology, but and the uh, value as an ownership of uh, digital identity. It's very uh, important for the creators, for the artists, for, um, for all of the people that want to contribute to their work, how to identify that um, infrastructures, how to be visible, how to value their identities, and how to, to uh, enable the identities to be, to be transferred. So what we can uh, learn from, from Europe, um, uh, EBSI as uh, uh, European Blockchain Services Infrastructure is enabling to value digital identities through verifiable credentials. For example, in the field of uh, education, uh, in the field of uh, social security, in the field of traceability of uh, documents, of data, how we can evaluate the data and uh, this is the challenge also for the global community. And here maybe we can uh, extend our partnership also with the um, uh, foresight to have a global uh, interoperable infrastructure um, and uh, to, to share the consciousness that this infrastructure exists. Uh, in the last mile, we um, are adding into the partnership career one, which has a great project. Uh, it will be presented uh, a little bit later by uh, Samer. And uh, um, and I see, I need to mention Ken Kitatani, uh, who is uh, the executive, uh, executive director of International Council for Environmental um, Economics and Development, uh, and a very valuable partnership with the Ministry of uh, Economy uh, and uh, uh, in Slovenia to um, maybe upgrade these uh, infrastructures to, to bring them to the people, to the local communities and to make a maximum possible use of this for uh, joining forces and be visible. Thank you. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> Thank you, Lena, and it's so wonderful for the UN system to have somebody in the Ministry of Economy that wants yes. to support the SDGs. It's not <laughs> obvious. <laughs> and uh, now to summer, Vishay, Carrier One, uh, please tell us about your innovative solution. And now a little bit 
Uh, we are already over time, but I think there's not really a big pressure. The session starts at three o'clock, so if we start at, uh, ten minutes before three, it will be fine. But please, two, two and a half minutes. Then uh, Ellen and uh, Ken, if you would like to say also a few words, and then I would like to have five minutes of discussion as well, so that uh, anybody can also contribute, please. Thanks, Mir. Uh, good afternoon, it's esteemed guests and uh, fellow uh, innovators. Uh, my name is Sam Bishe, CEO and co-founder of Carrier One. I'm honored to be here today uh, at the UN headquarters, uh, brought together by the Globe Show uh, Global uh, Challenges Initiative, uh, to discuss how Carrier One and uh, Deepin, uh, Deepin is Decentralized Physical Infrastructure, you'll, you'll hear me say that uh, acronym a lot, uh, can provide a pivotal leap uh, towards achieving some of the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals. The transformative potential of Carrier One in bridging the digital divide and connecting lives and not just connecting places through decentralized physical infrastructure networks. In our quest to connect the uh, unconnected, we face a stark reality. Nearly one third of the world's population remains offline and with the digital divide most acute in rural and underprivileged communities. This gap hinders progress on education, healthcare, and economic opportunity, directly impacting our ability to meet the SDGs. Carrier One embodies a revolutionary approach to this challenge. By leveraging decentralized physical infrastructure, we can extend connectivity to the farthest and most isolated regions while generating income for those communities. Imagine a world where internet access is as ubiquitous as the air we breathe. This is the vision Carrier One brings to life. Decentralized networks, powered by innovative technologies such as blockchain and mesh networking, ensure resilience, security, and accessibility. These networks are not just theoretical, they are being built and tested in communities around the globe demonstrating that we can democratize access to information and technology. By connecting the unconnected, Carrier One directly contributes to several of the SDGs. Quality education, that's SDG4, becomes accessible to all through online learning platforms. Decent work and economic growth, that's SDG8, are stimulated by opening up new markets and job opportunities, and importantly, reduced inequalities are achieved by leveling the playing field for access to information and digital services. Today, I call upon international organizations, governments, private sector leaders, and communities to join forces in supporting and scaling initiatives like Carrier One, and together we can build a future where digital connectivity is not a privilege, but a right accessible to all, paving the way towards an inclusive, sustainable world. Let us embrace this moment as a catalyst for change, working hand in hand to harness the power of decentralized physical infrastructure for global. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Samba. It's such an important element in the overall picture that we really bring connectivity to the people. Because this is the precondition to be fully part of this global family. And the work that you are doing with indigenous communities also is really breaking and really happy to uh, work with you. Ellen is also doing a great job on peace, one of the important uh, peace building, uh, youth education. You have two minutes, not more. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> he knows me very well. Uh, keepers of peace is uh, my organization and uh, I think what is being lost to be honest is peace starts here peace starts with the individual and a lot of people talk about peace as being here and there we are focused on the individual we are focused on giving the individual an identity and a sense of purpose in the ecosystem that we are building called Keepers of Peace. We are trying to personalize an impersonal uh, world, and we have some amazing technologies that we're using, but we're coupling technology with humanism. Humanism and technology should work hand in hand. And this is uh, the main crux of Keepers of the Peace. 
We're also going to be working with Eco City School Programs, and we're going to have five initial cities worldwide. New York City, uh, we have good contacts to the mayor, will be one. Two will be New Delhi. Three, we want a city in Japan. Four, there will be a city in, uh, we hope, Uganda, uh, in Kampala. And the fifth is still up for grabs. So if anybody wants to volunteer a city, uh, but th these will be pilot programs for uh, what we're doing. And the idea is to connect the school to the community and to the government where the money will come. And then we will spread these cities all over the world. And uh, there'll be schools all over the world. So the secret really is like you were saying, connectivity. It's just connecting all the elements together, but knowing how important uh, it is to get the backing. And uh, we really want to encourage entrepreneurship and careers. We want to take a student all the way through primary school, secondary school, high school, to being an entrepreneur or having a career in the new um, green economies of the world. And so we have a lot of, uh -oh. uh, <laughs> we, we have a lot of uh, online uh, focus groups. We have forums where they could actually share ideas, come up with uh, uh, solutions together. It's all based on together. We have this amazing technology it's uh, called human hollow messaging, where I could send any one of you uh, anywhere in the world by a mobile phone, and it looks like you are in the classroom. Uh, it comes from England, and it's an amazing technology. So we, again, we want to personalize the experience. Thank you. I believe the programs like yours are really a pool of uh, creative assets generation. And you will use it on your platform, but uh, we will build bridges that it can be also shown on our platform. Mm -hmm. And I see that there are also a great uh, creative economy, purpose economy oh. possibility that uh, people will reach a global audience, a bigger audience, and then there will be revenues generated and uh, through philanthropic funding, corporate social responsibility funding, subscription, advertisers, and then uh, people who are working on this kind of topics will have an income and all of us will be happy. <laughs> or, uh, if you could say a few words, you are also with the NGO Committee on Sustainable Development and we cannot bring Marco because of the audio problems. Would you like to share or who would you like to uh, uh, represent in another function? I would like to represent today uh, the Humanitarian Focus Foundation as well okay. as the Coalition for the OME. Um, I know that Margo speaks so eloquently about, the cult, about her organization that I can't possibly do it justice. But it's a pleasure to be here to speak to, to you all today and talk to you about the importance of partnerships. So my name is Rory Munshine. I'm a UN Youth Representative for the Humanitarian Focus Foundation, and I also assist with communications for the coalition for the UN We Need, where they do um, work to promote people-centered multilateralism. It's a collection of civil society organizations, including so many esteemed colleagues here today, that focus on how to reform the UN and make it more fit for purpose in order to create um, a people-centered multilateralism and the UN We Need to achieve the sustainable development goals. And I'm here today to talk to you about the importance of partnerships in general and how we can actually market the SDGs to people in, to people so that, yes, <laughs> no, I, I can do it. <laughs> So I think that it's incredibly important for us to think about how we're marketing the SDGs to different stakeholders, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think any single person on this planet would object to the sustainable development goals. I mean, who would say no to zero poverty, zero hunger, health and well-being, and the idea that nobody gets left behind, right? Nobody here. But I think it's a question of how are we framing it to people that are in power, and how do we as civil society continue to engage in the conversation? and how we maintain civic spaces so that we can continue to engage in the dialogue and leverage all the expertise that are here today and work with decision makers to actually implement it, right? I think that it's a question of figuring out how we can think beyond yes, our own personal SDGs and our own particular interest areas, but 
figuring out how to market to other people. And I think that online technologies provide a unique opportunity for us to engage more people and think about how it's more than just a singular SDG and how they're all intersectional. And it gives us the opportunity to engage people from all over the world. And I'm super excited that there are so many different efforts to engage civil society, both virtually and in person. And so today I want to encourage all of you to continue following the Coalition for You on these work and continue to advocate for the protection of civil spaces because conferences like these are amazing. And it's great to hear all the expertise that are going on from the NGO sectors, from different um, nonprofits and different stakeholders. But it's important to make sure that, that civil space is protected so that we can continue to engage in these dialogues and uh, ensure that the UN is incorporating all of these different voices. Thank you. The coalition for the UN want is really a very important network, and on Friday there is a session, uh, I think in the morning, uh, at the Baha'i International Center about uh, input to the consultations for the Pact of the Future, the section about youth and uh, future generations, so uh, everybody encouraged to participate there in person or virtually. Is there anybody who would like to contribute to the discussion or? Yes, please, uh, Rubin. Uh, but perhaps you sit, uh, join us here or uh, that we will have you on the camera. Yes, please. Yeah. Ken, would you like to say something? After Rubin? Sure. Yeah. Fine. Thank you. Two minutes. Yes, I'm not short. <laughs> I follow under the leadership of Ali Mustafa, I've been part of the Agassi uh, in New York, and now we're focusing in LA. Uh, as it relates to the UN and the communications process and entrepreneurial process, my understanding from the entrepreneurial process is that when youth get engaged with the entrepreneurial process and they take money for their process, immediately there's an exchange of intellectual property that goes to the person that gave them the money in the first place. And that is a hindrance to their growth, hindrance to their prosperity. So what's the point of engaging in a technological paradigm when you already lost it? So my understanding is how do we use the event that's happening in Los Angeles, May 30, 31st, June 1st, June 2nd, and use the platform for entrepreneurial process where those youth could come in through our networks of IYC, empower them through the university, get them grants from a foundational perspective, and they own the intellectual property, they launch, they become successful, it's their money. That's it. Well, that's a <laughs> <laughs> the management of intellectual property rights is really essential for this creative economy and everything, and uh, giving the creators a share, uh, a fair share, it's very important. Ken, would you like to join us here? And then already the next one can uh, prepare the thoughts or uh, uh, express interest. Okay, please, yeah. Well, we have the 10 to 10 before. So we have, okay, one more we will have. Ken, please. Two minutes, right? Right on, two minutes. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ken Jitani, as I was introduced by Nana. Uh, I serve as the Managing Director of the International Council on Environment, Economics and Development. We are a UN think tank, part of the Open Environment Unit, the Environmental Program. We are also a multi-stakeholder coalition serving as a bridge between the different sectors of society, whether it's private sector, public, civil society, and all different organizations, the different types of organizations within uh, civil society. We do a lot of work, for example, with the indigenous communities. countries in the world, uh, member states in the United Nations, but in particular we have uh, recently been focusing on the climate policies and also the policies uh, in terms of AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, why? Because that's the revolution that we're going through and it's impacting all aspects of society and there are many concerns and uh, there are many benefits. So as part of this research project, uh, we are working with different uh, parts of the Slovenian government because they are, as has uh, been explained before, 
uh, leaders in uh, AI, uh, in particular with the, our relationship with Nana and her ministry, the Ministry of uh, Economy, Tourism, and Sports. We are focusing on research and uh, projects that look at the intersectionality between climate and also AI. Let's do it. Thank you. Bravo. <laughs> uh, well, CSGPC is, an important dimension. CSGPC yeah. is, uh, is one of the uh, prominent uh, NGO uh, committees in the United Nations, part of civil society. I used to serve as a chair of that beforehand. Uh, still connected with that. Uh, they're very interesting because they focus on the ethics and values aspect of the SDG. So they work with uh, value-based organizations, uh, religious organizations, and also indigenous communities. So uh, yeah, it's good that you mentioned they are a very important component to the ethics and values of the whole SDG process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe that that's really the foundation for uh, this uh, citizens' engagement and youth engagement, creators' engagement, that we have this shared new values, this orientation towards the common good, and uh, therefore we have to go a layer deeper beyond uh, below price tags and so uh, and because it informs you know values informs the behaviors and the yes, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. driver uh, for all the action thank you thank you, thank you. Um, hello everybody um, my name is Samina Mugo I'm an international fashion designer I want to thank you Mac for um, bringing me here today and a, a chance to, you know, meet all of you amazing organizations. A little bit about me, um, I do fashion weeks in every fashion capital of the world, New York, London, Milan, and Paris. Also going to conquer Dubai this year, as well as Cannes Film Festival. Um, now, part of what I do is a lot of philanthropy. So we bring stage four cancer survivors on our catwalk in New York, uh, in Dallas. And then we're going to actually bring the Down syndrome model to our catwalk in, um, in Paris. Uh, we also do a lot of collaborative work with, with musical artists, brand new artists that have never been on the stage before. And through our platform, they end up being recognized. Some of them have gone on to uh, become big artists. They have albums out now. And, and I really feel that it's a, great, um, it's a great platform for them to get started and really who, who doesn't know about Fashion Week? And, and they get a lot of exposure. So I heard a lot of people talking here about partnerships, partnerships. I would love to partner with anything that you're doing to help as many people as I possibly can. Bravo. <laughs> okay, with this, okay, there is uh, this young lady. Okay, please join us here and then you come as well. We will. After, after, after. Uh, yeah. <laughs> please join us here so the camera gets you. Yes. So it's fine, it's important. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. I do uh, miss uh, Brooklyn. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Nicolette Stephanie Compier. I am a former Miss New Yorker. And a former Miss Earth USA Eco and a former Glow Charlotte Eco. <laughs> this is a little bit of a reunion. I've been away for a little while, so I haven't been able to work as closely um, with Miro and Mac as much as I did in the past. But um, I have always been an advocate of ESTGs. I started working with them in 2019. Um, I had the pleasure of being a part of the music festival for STGs with Mac um, during the pandemic. And I am just really grateful to be here. I wanted to make myself known because I would love to connect with everyone that spoke today. I think there's a lot of opportunity for um, connections and for valuable content and valuable things to be created. Um, Please. Two minutes. 
Okay. Um, I speak Portuguese, Korean, and French. English, I speak little. Can I speak French or I try English? I'm Flavio Saudade. I'm Brazilian, but I work in Congo, GRC, uh, about uh, six years. You work uh, for former young edu uh, social educators and DRC and Kiv, North Kivu. Yeah, we have uh, many, many problems there. Yeah, my question is how can I, how can we introduce the young uh, in the zone disasters zone and uh, war zones? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, the, how, when I speak uh, uh, SDGs, how can I speak with a young in the disaster zones and conflict zones? Uh, is the is a challenge for us. Yeah, we need the partner, but partner permanent partners. Uh, utilize uh, technology, but the the more powerful technology is human technology. Because for the, these people, and now we have uh, one uh, one hundred million children and youngs in the context spaces. Yeah. How can we speak about the SDGs and involve these people for the change the world? This is a question uh, for, for us because we work in different levels and he work in the ground roots and we need to help there because the conflict is there and here is the thinking in action. Now how can I, we can work together to help these people to become the leaders because we need the leaders there too. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Saudade, I'm founder and uh, uh, direct, executive director for Gingando Pela Paz. You use uh, uh, capoeira, social capoeira, capoeira is a cultural mixer natural arts Brazilian for to form uh, social educators. Wow. Congo, Haiti, Brazil. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We will make connection. You will be invited to join us also for our uh, TV streaming platform because yes. having these stories from disasters uh, stroke, uh, uh, areas is very important and we can also see with the Slovenian uh, mission yes. Yes. Uh, security council uh, membership these days and also Austrian mission as a candidate to the uh, Security Council 2027-28. Perhaps we could uh, do a session about how can global community connect with the young people yes. in these uh, areas uh, through digital means and so help, helping in conflict uh, prevention and peace building. Yes, connect and form the, these people because it, we have women and, and children they need the for, uh, format to help other people. Yes, with Revolution Love, we uh, work with um, parents, mothers and, and daughters in Afghanistan on educating them and also dealing with trauma because we're, we're building a curriculum on trauma, on how to handle it and how to work through it and be able to learn at the same time. So I'd love to also help you Thank with you. that. Yeah, so yeah, we have yeah. a whole educational arm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Bravo. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, good. Good. And then we finish. <laughs> Are you all uh, Please, quickly, it's uh, 59. Uh, they will be angry if we are uh, keeping people away from the plenary. Uh, please. Yes, yeah. uh, so, really quick. Um, so, I'm Evelyn Chow. I'm a freshman uh, in high school at Civil Friends um, in DC. So. Not that far away. Um, and I am the founder of PM Ready, uh, which is a nonprofit uh, 501c3 organization that uh, inspires the youth to uh, the, the sorry, <laughs> that empowers the youth through project management. Um, so PM, uh, uh, PMI, the P Project Management Institute, they
which is the same thing, well, the youth version of uh, project management, the certification for adults. Uh, and so I took it and I, uh, I found it really useful and inspiring and, uh, and I, you know, I thought, well, why doesn't, you know, everyone else, because we can use projects on a daily basis. And using project management can help us organize uh, projects uh, that we have on our daily basis in a um, useful and strategic way um, and time effective and everything. So I thought, well, how does, you know, why doesn't, you know, everyone else, other other kids have that, you know, why do they, why do they, why do they not have that ability to, um, so that's why I founded my organization. Um, and so what we do is, uh, we support uh, and inspire uh, youth from all over the world to um, through project management to um, and they have they can incorporate you know SDGs um, into you know their projects and stuff. So uh, yeah, so that's my quick uh, two cents. So yeah. Yeah. Very uh, yeah, with this, I'm very grateful <laughs> for everybody that uh, have joined, for your time, for the great work that you are doing, for the ideas and visions that you have shared. And uh, everybody invited to join Gotcha, you had the QR code and the link to the survey where we uh, um, are then available. You express which kind of uh, involvement you are aiming for and uh, what your motivation is. And then we will get back to you and hope to have you then with us uh, in Austria and uh, with a day program was in Slovenia. And last week of May and first week of June for our Grotcha Co-Creation Festival. And let's co-create the future together. It's yes. possible. Yeah. Yeah.